Um, I'm very happy to say that um, the President William Ruto uh, sent me to Qatar. I went to Qatar and I had invited the Minister of Qatar to come here and introduced me to a very large company that wants to try the Kenyan market, uh, especially for what they are calling staff jobs, even other jobs. Kawaida, Kenyans have been going to Qatar and other places for low-scale jobs. So we are trying to introduce a mix to see whether they can now start uh, getting jobs. Qatar has never accepted nurses from Kenya or doctors from Kenya, but now they have agreed to get nurses and doctors and professionals and real estate people and accountants and ICT people in Kenya. So uh, the team came uh, on a small experiment to see whether the Kenyan market works. They are very pleased, so they have extended their time until Sunday and they'll be interviewing uh, people for various jobs so they can give them jobs. We already have uh, an offer of 8,000 different jobs uh, for people to work in various countries. Uh, there's a big project they have in Algeria uh, of agriculture project where there's need a lot of construction workers. They also have projects in, uh, in, in Iraq and also some in, uh, in Saudi. So it's a company that is it's quite big. It, it's, it's one that is building airports all over the world and many centers. We have been uh, calling people uh, over the week uh, based on uh, the database that we have maybe at Chutali College, at uh, NYS and others. So this is the first time we've opened it up now to the general public to see whether we can fill in the gaps when they added the numbers. Our expectation is to get at least 3,000 people hired by this Sunday so that we know in the next two to three weeks 3,000 people will be able to go overseas for work. We are... Uh, doing the interviews right here at KICC and also at uh, Kabete National Polytechnic. So at Kabete National Polytechnic, they're doing skill tests. So you come, you say you're an electrician, manokpatia mbao, weke wiring, wajue, washeta, wajue. You say you're a plumber, you cut pipes, you put together, you fit according to their specifications. You say you're a mason, unajenga ukuta. You say you, you do a plaster, you plaster a wall. You're a painter, you paint. You say you operate machinery, unakahapo, unachimba escavator, unatua, unaroll, so that the, there's not only just the interview, but also to see whether you actually have the skill. We are also, they're also taking nearly 500 drivers. So if you go to KCC uh, right here, there are people driving buses and trucks. So you're driving, you have a license, you're, you qualify, you go on board, and you drive a, a vehicle. If you qualify, you get hired, and then uh, you're able to transit to getting something for yourself. I'd like to say this, the Kenyan economy is at a place right now over the last 15 years whereby the number of people seeking jobs is growing faster than the economy is growing. President William Ruto's government has a plan to grow the economy, but in the meantime, as a stopgap measure, we have to keep our people employed. That is how Singapore did it. That is how the Philippines have done it. That is how the Indians have done it. So job migration is an opportunity for Kenyans to go for two, three years get even some more skills and come back as brain gain to our country. My duty is also to find companies out there together with my colleagues in trade and others to come and invest in Kenya so that now the jobs are in Kenya. And so I'm holding some meetings with people to see how we can have centers set up in Kenya for people to do jobs. When we were in Germany, the president was negotiating for companies, big motor companies, to come and do their manufacturing here so that you're building cars for them, you're building fridges for them, but in Kenya. So it is both getting people to go overseas and also getting jobs to come here uh, to ensure that our young people who are well-skilled and bright. Kenya has some of the best labor in the world, smartest people in the world, I think. I'm biased, I'm Kenyan, but our young people are very bright, very hardworking. We just, people just need an opportunity, and that's what we're giving them. Was it one of the requirements you had noted on your post online that the passport was not mandatory? One visa job can secure a passport later, but we've seen here specifically that if you don't have a passport, you don't enter. I think that is a, it was a bit of miscommunication. I've just communicated to them that initially they didn't want passports. And I asked them, I asked these guys, why is it that you're requiring people to come with passports? And they said it's because they have gone to other countries. They mentioned a few countries I want to mention, whereby the person who shows up was not the person they interviewed. They, f they put passports that, are, you know, somebody comes with a passport and then somebody goes to the, to, to, as a chef and they have never been in a kitchen, you know. So there's ukora. They can be up akuna ukora. So I discussed with Qatar last night and they agreed people can be interviewed without passports. And I've also organized with the ministry 
uh, in charge of uh, interior, in charge of immigration, uh, and passports will be availed to the people who get hired within a day or two once they have done the normal processes of application for a passport. So some of the countries you have mentioned, like Saudi Arabia, we have so many Kenyans who have gone there before, they are decrying they want to come back here, but we are sending others. So which measures are you I, I think I think the, the issue is this. There are different categories of jobs. The, de the cry we've heard from countries where people have gone and said, when I test one time, Kurudi, are usually for uh, house helps. You know? I want to open jobs for ICT experts. If you go to Riyadh, you go to uh, Qatar, you go to Dubai, you know, these are multi, you know, they're cities that are next to, you know, second to none in the world in terms of technology. Our ICT people are stuck in Kenya. Why can they work in Qatar? Why can they work in Saudi Arabia? We want our agriculture specialists to go there. They are hiring specialists from Saudi Arabia to work in, in uh, you know, in, 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 the, in Saudi Arabia, you know. Uh, they are hiring people from Australia to work in Riyadh. Why can't they get Kenyans to go there? We've got people trained who are teachers, you know, teachers for a second language. Who can go there? So the, the cry you've heard is usually in one sector. It's not the entire sector. If you go to these countries, you find Kenyans who are working there as drivers, Kenyans who are working there as uh, receptionists. You find Kenyans in the hotel industry. They're not complaining. They're doing well. So we cannot blame one sector where there's a small problem for a bigger problem. So we want to transition so that Kenyans are not just hired to be housemaids. Kenyans are also hired to be ICT experts, to be general managers, to be bank managers, and all the jobs that we have people who are qualified to do. I'm concerned about cleaners. This is largely an untrained skill. These are the same group that whenever they go to UAE and Middle East countries, they come up with water stories. What measures are to do? What, what they have done here is that they are not hiring people as cleaners who don't have experience. So basically they are hiring cleaners who are cleaners for the hotel industry. So you come with your CV, uh, with a attestation that you've worked for a, a hotel in Kenya, you've worked for a company with that evidence, that's when you get hired as a cleaner. So it's not just somebody waking up and going to be a cleaner where you don't really realize how you need to work as a cleaner. And that's been the challenge. You just pick somebody uh, from the road, unampleka kama cleaner, anakuta na cho, anangia huko, chemical as you, anamix na munagani, anakuwa shida. Here they are being asked questions. What chemical do you mix with this to get this out? If somebody has poured, let's say, a beer, uh, you know, or somebody has poured oil, or somebody has poured this chemical on the ground, what chemical do you use to remove it? So if you don't know, then you've not been a cleaner. And so you're not hired. And so we are just get making sure that the people who are hired know their job. Because if you know your job, then it becomes easier for you uh, to adapt to the new uh, system. Ningependa kusema hivi, kwa ufupi, ni kusema ya kwamba, huu ni wakati mzuri katika nchetu ya Kenya, kusawabu, tunatafutia vijana wetu kazi. Kuna vijana wengi sana wana kazi. Nilienda Qatar, nimetumwa na rais wetu, nika negotiate na wizara ya, ya leba huko, pamoja na, na kampuni kubwa, ambayo imekuja hapa kwa ajili wa Kenya elfu nane. Mlango wa kwanza tuajiribu wa Kenya elfu tatu kufikia jumapili. Waende wakifanya kazi tofauti. Wa okuo wakaguzi, wa mahospitali, wengine ni mamanager, wa real estate, wengine wanafanya ka, kama chefs, wengine wanafanya kama waiters, wengine wanafanya kazi tofauti, alafu kuna wale pia wanafanya kama cleaners, wengine wanafanya kazi kama uh, plant operators, wengine wanafanya kama plumbers, electricians, watu tofauti, maeneo tofauti kama vile tumechapisha. Kwa hiyo unaohimiza wa Kenya kama una ujuzi, una vitambulisho ya kuoneshana kwamba umeitimu, unaweza kufanya kazi njoo ujaribu ujaribu bahati yako. Unaweza pata bahati upate kazi, uende kule mbele. Mshahara sio mbaya, ni mzuri una unapewa kulingana ile kazi unafanya na pia wanakupa mahali ya kulala unapewa chakula chakula kila siku ukiwa kazini unapewa transportation na huko hakuna tax you know hakuna income tax mshahara ukipewa kama ni uh, 1040 hiyo 40 ni yako peke yako unachukua hiyo pesa unatuma nyumbani unatumia mke wako nyumbani unatumia mume wako nyumbani unasomesha mtoto unapele unatumia baba ama unaweka kama saving yako utakuja kujenga nyumba kwa hivyo ni pesa zako mwenyewe. Ukienda pale ufanye kazi taratibu vizuri bila kuharibu pesa utakuwa sambamba kabisa utapata pesa. Miaka mitatu naenda unapata contract ya miaka miwili mitatu wakati huo uchumi utakuwa umepanda kabisa. Serikali ya William Ruto ndio ukuje hapa uendelee kujenga hali yetu ya uchumi na kujenga taifa letu la Kenya. Jambo la mwisho ni hili. Jambo la maana. 
hii kazi usikubali mtu akwambie nipe pesa ndio nikupeleke upate hiyo kazi hii kazi sisi kama serikali ndio tumenegotiate kuja hapa unafanywa interview bila malipo you are being interviewed without paying anything once you are offered the job you will be told what you need to come up with for you to be able now to be uh, to go for medicals to get your visa and others because there are other costs that now an employer cannot pay for you but once you do all those things your ticket is paid for and you will be able to go so uh, for example if i pay for somebody's uh, medicals na anguke 25000 shillings and i'm an employer then i'm at a loss loss you know what i mean so there are some things that you have to pay for yourself you can't expect an employer to come and get your id for you or your employer to come and you know do your your, your fingerprinting for such for good conduct for you so there are some things as a, as you look for work that you so whoever all the poor are hired we'll put them together and tell them this is the requirement and don't agree anybody else to tell you add more money here add here we want people to be conned we want this to be a very clean affair where people get justice and anything they spent the time they spent coming from their rural area to come be interviewed uh, will be justified and lastly we cannot just hire people from Nairobi hatuwezi kuwa tunapita patia watu kazi kutoka Nairobi peke yake and that is why within the next 2 to 3 weeks i'm going around the country county to county taking employers taking people with uh, demand jobs so that people can also be interviewed where they are they be interviewed in Kerugoya, interviewed in Machakos, interviewed in Kwale, interviewed in Lamu, interviewed in Vihiga, interviewed in uh, you know uh, the far corners of Ijara, interviewed everywhere in this country so that you don't have to travel here to get a job. We are going to come to you with a job because that is uh, what uh, the Kenya Kwanza government stands for. Going down to the ground to the people who are the voters and the people who need the support of the government. Asante sana. Thank you very much. Okay.